the membrane that allows bats to fly or other animals such as lizards or flying squirrels to glide can be called a patagium and it can actually be divided into sections so for example in bats the main section stretches from the fingertips to the side of the body and leg but then a separate uropatagium can uh, connect the uh, legs and tail although some bats lack this uropatagium the wing membrane of pterosaurs could actually be divided into three sections the main section could be called the brachiopatagium, and it is obviously attached to the tip of the fourth finger, which did not bear a claw. Where it attached to the body has been the subject of some debate, uh, where it has been the consensus uh, for many years uh, that uh, these membranes did not attach to the legs, but rather to the sides of the body. It now appears that at least in some pterosaurs, they did attach uh, to the leg, uh, certainly to the thigh and perhaps uh, to the ankle. This would be uh, the major portion of the wing membrane. A second section of the wing membrane is known as the propatagium stretching from a unique modified wrist bone known as the pteroid and then stretching to the neck. Finally, in the basal pterosaurs, but not in the pterodactyls, it was also possible that a uropatagium existed at connecting the legs and tail, or perhaps if it only connected uh, the legs and not the tail, it would be better referred to as a choropatagium instead. Once again, this is only known in the early pterosaurs, which possessed an elongated fifth toe, which probably had a role in attaching this membrane. The later pterodactyls lack this uh, part of the membrane and those elongated fifth toes. Finally, wings had other uh, soft tissues, which have been preserved in some fossils, preserving actinofibers, uh, which would have uh, served to support or strengthen the wings, although uh, the exact tissue they were made of is not clear, whether it was collagen or muscle or potentially cartilage. Finally, it is known that many pterosaurs, perhaps all pterosaurs, were covered in a hair-like covering of pycnofibers. While these look like hairs, they would not have been comparable to mammalian hairs and might actually have been similar to proto-feathers seen on predatory dinosaurs, uh, where these were essentially fluffy scales, uh, which in some pterosaurs could act actually branch to a degree. These probably supported some degree of being warm-blooded and may have helped to protect the wings as well.